In this video, we're going to use the finite difference method to approximate the solution to this equation minus Laplace u equals f on omega and u equals zero on the boundary of this domain omega, which means that we have Dirichlet boundary conditions. In the previous video, we saw how we could discretize, we could approximate Laplace u, and we did this using the five point stencil. And here is the formula we gave. Uh, in other words, let me actually just uh, simplify it a little bit. And as a matter of fact, let's just uh, simplify the notation slightly, and I will call this uh, obviously uh, with uh, two indices with the i and the j. Okay, uh, now what we have here is a numbering system with i and j, and I want my I want the, 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 the unknown u to be to be in, in, in a vector, right? So I'm going to renumber uh, the elements of this of this u. I mean, u at this point is defined in the grid, but I'm going to just number the elements uh, using the uh, numbering system that we talked about earlier. Uh, and here is the uh, dual index to single index, if you want, uh, that is going to be defined. So uh, what we're going to do is therefore considering this approximation. And uh, by the way, if for some reason un is not defined, then I will replace it by, by zero if we are out of range, if you prefer. So here is the discretization of the Laplace operator minus Laplace u equals f will be replaced by this discretization. Uh, well, basically to the left hand side, what we have is the approximation we discussed in the previous video, thanks to the five point stencil. And to the right hand side, well, basically we have the value of f at the point of the grid, and we simply numbered this uh, the, 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 the component of the vector using only one uh, index. So this is what we have. Now, when we're going to solve, uh, when we're basically going to put this in matrix form, it means that we're going to have AH, UH equals FH, but uh, here is the form, the shape of the matrix AH. That will be 1 over H square. On the diagonals, we're going to have blocks. These blocks will be composed of fours uh, on the diagonal, negative 1 above, negative 1 below. And then we will have zeros, a bunch of zeros. Uh, and after that, we'll have blocks with uh, negative identity, basically negative ones. Uh, on the diagonal, and then, and then the rest is zero. Why is that so? Well, you can understand that at, at a given point, you're going to get the four, uh, which is basically appearing here, the, 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 that, that's the four, the, this is the center, uh, and then you have something that is uh, to, to the left, something which is to the right, something which is up, and something which is down. So to the left and to the right, that explains negative one just above and just below the, 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 the diagonal. But then what happens is that when you go above and below, uh, you really have to go all the way j times uh, in your numbering system to recover the element which is just above. It's just above, but when you numbered your elements by just basically doing this, uh, then it means you need to wait until you go to the next line or you go to the line before uh, in order to, 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 to actually have it in your numbering system. That's why you have this, uh, the, this situation where you're going to have like basically uh, uh, J zeros or less than that, but I mean uh, J zeros uh, b before you actually get to, uh, to, to the next uh, to the next uh, value which is not zero. So really your matrix AH is on the diagonal you have four, just above and just below you have negative one, and then you have to wait uh, somehow j times, uh, and then you have a bunch of negative one above, and then you have uh, again j times uh, negative one below. So that, that's the form of this matrix AH uh, when we're doing the final difference method in dimension two. All right, uh, let me actually put this together into a program. So let's actually implement the final difference method uh, for that problem. So let's import numpy, uh, and I'm doing omega equals obviously a square here. I'm going to import uh, the library to do the sparse matrices. 
I'm going to import matplotlib because I'm going to do some graphs. I'm going to put j equals 4, but we can change this value. Actually, we'll change this value later uh, just to see how this behaves. And then h, uh, as, as usual, is going to be uh, 1 over j plus 1. That's the step. Now, I'm going to build my matrix AH. And as you know, I will start with doing actually h square ah I will, I will divide by h square later so let me actually uh just uh say this just uh so we mind what we're doing uh and i'm going to to build this matrix so first thing i'm going to do is um uh, entering the 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 the, the, the what, what is going on on the diagonal uh of the matrix on, on the matrices so let me actually first put that we have a diagonal of t that is basically a bunch of fours then i'm going to put what we have uh just above and just below that will be negative ones and of course i need to be careful in how many i'm going to have i have obviously j square a force on the diagonal because it's a you know it's j, j, j by you know, it's j square but i mean if, if i'm just above and below then that will be j square minus one i mean you can just 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 write the matrix it's, it's obvious okay so uh, I'm, I'm putting the side diagonals of t uh and then what i'm doing is uh going to 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 to, to do what what happens uh, well, uh, obviously, I mean, with, with, with this, um, I'm just going to have to wait a little bit, uh, j times, and, th and then I'm going to get my, 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 my one, my negative one, actually. So I'm just doing what I call diagonal of i, and then I'm going to put together this matrix using the sparse um, uh, diagonal matrix command, uh, and, and that is what I have. So you can see that at the, the, at, at the negative j, um, negative j means uh, j uh, diagonal below my the, my, my main diagonal, uh, then I have negative one, which is just below my diagonal. Then I have the diagonal at zero. Then I have one, which is above the diagonal, and then I have j, which is j diagonal above. Okay, uh, and so uh, here is the way I store my my matrix H to A H, which I divide by H square to get to get to get A H. Okay, so uh, if that's not completely clear for you, you really want to uh, to take the time to understand this. Uh, and um, I'm going to do something that you should never do uh, when you have a sparse matrix, which is basically converted to a non-sparse matrix. Um, well, it's the same matrix, obviously, but I mean, uh, in, in the memory of the computer, it's not the same. So I'm going to to, to basically convert it to a, a normal matrix, which completely defeats the purpose of having a, a sparse uh, library to begin with. So here's what, what you have if you were to do print h2 underscore ah dot a, that will actually convert your matrix into a, a, a normal matrix and then print it. And you can see here's what you get. I mean, here's what, what, what you obtain. And let me actually put some colors here. Uh, you get, you know, I mean, th these blocks. I mean, you have like these blocks where you have um, four uh, on the diagonal, uh, negative one above, negative one below, and then you have obviously this 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 uh, this minus identity um, above and below, and then a bunch of zeros everywhere else. Okay, so so basically what you have is t uh, negative i. Uh, basically, it's what what we said before. Okay, so uh, th that's what we have. That's uh, that's our um, that's uh, that's what we have for 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 our, um, for 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 a h. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to build B. Uh, to build B, that's going to be easy because B is the vector where I evaluate F at each point of the grid. And obviously F is a constant, it's one. So when I evaluate one, when I evaluate one uh, anywhere, it's one. Uh, therefore the vector, uh, the, the, the vector B is going to be a bunch of ones. That's, that's what we did here. Okay, now let's compute the solution. Uh, actually, I should say, let's compute the approximation of the solution. And all I need to do is to solve my linear system. And I'm using the command to, to do that. Okay. All right. Now what I will want to do is to print the solution. And uh, to print the solution, what I'm going to do is to plot the solution. That's, of, co of course, what I, what I want to do. So to, to plot the solution, what 
I need to do is not to put back the boundary condition that for which I know what is the solution. I mean, the solution is zero on the boundary. So uh, what I will need to do is to, I mean, I have the values of u where I did not know what were the values of u, so I did the, I did, I did the job. I mean, you know, that the work was done, but I want to, uh, for, for plotting purposes, uh, what I'm going to do is to create z, which inside will have my u, inside of the domain, and outside will basically have zeros, uh, because I know that we have a derivative boundary condition. So, so that's, that's, that's why I'm defining a z here. And uh, what I'm going to do is first plot the solution uh, looking from above with a color scheme. So here is what I get. Uh, and obviously, depending on the color, you can actually know what is the value of u, actually the approximation of u. And I will do another type of plot, basically just a very regular uh, 3D plot. And here is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to enter the, the Python command. You can, you can obviously download this program and, and you know, change things and see how it works. And here is the approximation of the solution uh, visualized in 3D. So as you can see, I mean, we took j equals 4. Uh, so it's not a very good... Uh, graph. I mean, here is what, what, what we had for, for j equals 4. Um, we can obviously do much better if we increase the value of j. Here's what we have for j equals 40. Uh, here's what we have for j equals 400. And here's what we have for j equals 800.